Hey everybody, this is Patrick JMT and I'm partnering with Chegg. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about arc length. So we'll, we'll talk about finding the length of an arc. This is something you typically would see in a Calculus 2 course, I would say. Okay, so suppose I've got a function here, y equals f of x on some closed interval a to b. I think the idea of arc length is easy enough. Imagine we could, you know, kind of uh, lift this graph up and, and take that, you know, imagine if it's a piece of string or something and you could pull it straight and then we could simply measure it with a ruler, and that would be the arc length. That's what we're trying to, to, to find out. Okay, well, the problem, we can't do that because our, our curve is all, is all um, well, our function's all curvy. Let me say it that way, right? It's got all these changes in it. If it was just a bunch of straight line segments, I could use the distance formula, and then I could compute the length relatively easily. But we don't have that luxury here. But we're still going to make use of that to come up with an approximation. So suppose I chop up uh, my, my, uh, my arc into little pieces. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take some points, so p sub 0, p sub 1, p sub 2, etc., up to p sub n. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to connect those dots by straight line segments. And I could, again, compute the lengths uh, of these straight line segments easily just using the distance formula. Right, so suppose that p sub i up to p sub i minus 1, suppose that's the length of those straight line segments, lengths of segments of segment between uh, p sub i and p sub i minus 1. Well, if I add all of those segments up, so we would have to sum up from i equals 1 to n, if I sum up all of those, those lengths, I'm going to get an approximation to the actual arc length. Right? So this would be an approximation to the true arc length. Well, the idea is if I use uh, more and more of these segments, if I chop them up into, into more and more pieces, if I take the limit, it turns out that that's actually going to be equal to the true arc length. Now, the problem is, how do we compute this? You know, how do we work with this? Well, it turns out if you're clever and you use some calculus, you can come up with the following formula. So it says if f prime is continuous on the closed interval a to b, then the length of the curve on that interval a to b, we take the definite integral from a to b, we uh, the, we're integrating the square root of 1 plus, we take the derivative of the function, square that, and... Yeah, that's what we have to compute. So you're, you could have a, a curve of the form x equals g of y as well. It would be the same thing. Just replace f prime of x with g prime of y. And then your limits of integration would come from the y-axis. So you may see those as well. But let's look at one example here. So let's find the arc length y equals the natural logarithm of cosine of x on the interval from 0 to pi over 4. The only thing that's going to be um, difficult about these is just integrating this thing. Some of them will be straightforward. You may have to do trig substitutions. You may have to do u substitutions. You may have to use identities. Everything's fair game. So that's where the headache's going to be. The formula otherwise, I mean, the process is relatively straightforward. Take a derivative, square it, add one, try to integrate. Okay, so let's do this. Let's, well, let's try at least. So we've got y prime. Okay, so I have to use the chain rule. So the derivative of ln of cosine of x, I'll get 1 over cosine of x, and then I multiply by the derivative, which is negative sine x. That's negative sine over cosine. Um, so sine over cosine is tangent. So this will be um, negative tangent of x. Okay, um, so far so good. And... Next, what I'm going to do is we'll have to square that. So again, this is my y prime or my f prime. So f prime squared, that would be negative tangent of x squared or tangent squared of x. Okay, so now I'm computing the definite integral from 0 to pi over 4. I've got 1 plus, um, we already computed our f prime of x uh, squared. We got 1 plus tangent squared of x. Now I'm thinking, okay, <clears throat> what do I do? What do I do with this thing? Well, you may recall the identity. Let's see. So sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. If we divide everything by cosine squared, we get tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared of x. So, okay, I can actually replace uh, 
my 1 plus tangent squared with secant squared of x. But if I take the square root of secant squared, I can just write that as secant of x. And again, I can use just uh, secant of x because secant will be positive over this interval from 0 to pi over 4. If you're wondering why, I didn't put it in absolute value. So now the question is, how do we integrate this thing? And again, this is where, okay, maybe you know a formula, maybe you don't. Let's see, the way that we can do this one, it's actually maybe not quite obvious. So I'm going to write secant of x as secant of x over 1. I'm going to multiply this by secant x minus tangent x. And I'm going to do that to the numerator, and I'm also going to do it to the denominator. Okay, so why on earth? Well, in the numerator, I would get secant squared x minus secant x times tangent x. In the denominator, I have secant of x minus tangent of x. Well, I'm going to use a u substitution. I'm going to let u equal the denominator, secant of x minus tangent of x. Well, in this case, my du is going to be, so the derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x, and the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x dx. Notice that's almost what we have in the numerator, right? In the numerator, it's just the signs are flip-flopped. So I could multiply both sides by a negative, but if I multiply uh, by a negative, what that will do on the right side, I'll have negative secant x tangent x plus secant squared of x dx. So again, I've got my negative secant of x tangent x, that's right here, my plus secant squared, that's that part, my dx. So everything is going to get replaced rather nicely here. Okay, so I'm doing a u substitution. Normally I should compute new limits of integration. I'm going to put little question marks because um, I'll, I'll just, I'm going to turn it back into x when I'm done and I'll use that. So in the denominator, we have u, that's what uh, the denominator was equal to. And again, the, the numerator is equal to negative 1 du. All right, so if we integrate, I've got the natural logarithm of the absolute value of u. Again, my new limits of integration. So that would be negative the natural logarithm of secant x minus tangent of x. And now I, I've gone back to the original variable. I can go back to the original limits of integration, which were 0 to pi over 4. I will let you compute this from here. Um, so again, just plug in the upper limit of integration. So secant of pi over 4 minus tangent of pi over 4 minus the lower limit, which would be negative, the natural logarithm of secant of 0 minus tangent of 0. And yeah, whatever this equals, that's going to be your arc length. So, okay, again, there's nothing, I think, particularly tricky about getting things set up. Sometimes getting these questions set up is, is, is half the battle. These are relatively straightforward. Take a derivative, um, just like we did. Take a derivative, square it, um, add 1 to it, stick it underneath the square root, and hopefully what you have to integrate is not too terrible. Um, last comment, obviously the arc length should be some positive number. If you're getting some negative number out at the end, you've, you've, uh, you've mixed up something somewhere, so be careful about that. But um, yeah, otherwise, again, U substitution, trig substitution, integration by parts, I don't know. Everything's a candidate, so just good luck with the integration.